Okay, I'm going to make a little video on how I did that click track. So, I'll share the computer sound and share that. Um, I'm opening Audacity. And what I did is I was doing Crunchy, right? And looking at Crunchy and realizing that the beats per minute is 180, I realized an eighth note would be 360. So that's kind of what I based this whole thing on. Um, you go into Audacity, you generate your click track, rhythm track. Um, because we have five eight measures in here as well as five four three four whatever i'm going to base my clicks per minute on the eighth note which is 360 but um that means a quarter note is 180 so i'm going to set my quarter note for 180 for five counts and in crunchy the first three bars are that five beats at 180. um you want to make sure that you don't have a big delay. You, you might want to at the very beginning. This will make it so that there's no click at the very beginning of the track to give you a little bit of room. I guess I'll demonstrate it right now. And it left a five second click up front. We know that this is three bars because here's our big downbeat. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I then click the advanced uh, skip to end feature. And then when I, oh, and this is important, having the preferences for recording and track generation set up to um, not record on a new track is important for right now. Uh, I think, I don't know. I'm going to try it and see if it really is important or if I'm just making that up. So I go back to generate rhythm track again. And this time we have two bars of three, four. So our quarter note is still 180. I'll leave that change the beats per minute to three. Um, the swing amount, that will like go oh, do, da, do, da, do. It'll like actually do a swing rhythm if you want it to, a little bit or a lot. Um, so we've got two bars of three. I type in two, make sure that we don't have any seconds at the beginning of this track. Go ahead and push go. And now I have my two bars of three. Push the advance. Um, so we had the 5-8 bar, and I did a little bit of maths. And my maths were, I know how many, I know what the number value is for an eighth note, which was 360. And I know that there are three eighth notes in that 5-8 bar. So I divided it by five. And I figured out that the tempo marking that I want is 72 for an entire bar of 5-8, and that'll make it consistent with everything else that we're doing. So, generate rhythm track at 72 beats per minute. I think there were only like three bars of that. Again, no silence before the first beat. Hit go, we're there. And then we have the sound of, whoops, I'll go all the way to the beginning so we can hear the whole thing. Five seconds of silence at the very beginning. Our bars of five, four, our bars of three, four, and then our bars of five, eight. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, whatever. Um, but the eighth note is consistent through that whole thing. Okay, so that's how I set up Crunchy. Now we did another another one, Rose and I did, where we um where we were playing around with a song that had um, crescendo, decrescendo. So in order to do that, we generate a different kind of track. We are going to generate a, where is it? Oh, we're gonna add a time track. Now that time track is gonna make it possible for us to vary the, the speed of whatever tracks that we're doing. So here we go, we'll do the same thing. I'll generate a rhythm track at 180 and we'll make it three beat, we'll just do it in three. 
We'll do it in three number of bars. Let's make it over 20 so that I can demonstrate this rhythm track thing. And it adds our rhythm track right there. And let's say that we have, we're just looking at this, we can tell where there's one bar. Here's the first bar, second bar, third bar, fourth bar. Um, let's say that the fifth bar through the whatever if bar uh, decelerates. So we go up to our time track and we click on that to create a little point and then we go to the ending point of where we want the the final slowest point and then we decide where it is that we want to bring it down from so i'm going to decide that i'm going to uh slow down for one two three let's see one two three and a half bars and by the time I get to beat one of that bar it's going to be at the slowest and maintain there. So oops, so I put a point in right there and I slow it down. Now right now this is 90% of full speed, 100%, 110. We can change that range and I'll show you that in just a moment. So if I play that bar, that track, Wherever you want it to go back up to the normal speed, that's that's where we do it. And I believe that um, um, it might be a little bit tough to find uh, a change to a different tempo. But at that point, instead of doing on like this, we would probably just cut this, um, split, split it, uh, add a split, delete the rest of all this out of here forget about it. And instead of um, trying to get our tempo to be anything special on a specific number based on percentages over here, instead we just add, like if this is where the tempo changes, we'd add a new track right there at the new tempo based on the generate time track thing. You, got, you, you should make sure that you're a little bit more aligned with where the beat actually is, of course. See, I was off. So I would probably like wanna chop this sucker off or, you know, get rid of that so that it can, um, so that the next thing that I generate is gonna be right, right there on the beat where the beat was. Okay, so there's that. Now, um, I said that you can change the range for the speed, slow down or speed up, you can. And you do that by going over here to the time track label, pulling it down, and we change the range. I have no idea what linear scale, logarithmic scale, or log, log, logarithmic interpolation means right now um, because I just learned how to do this today. So the range, there's the range. The lower speed limit can be, it's a percentage. So I can take it down to as slow as, I don't know, really slow, the 25% of the original speed. And then it'll ask you for your upper speed limit as well. So in order to see that, we can't see it on the bar, but you can grab this track and just pull it down so that it shows those numbers a little bit better. And just for kicks, let's take this all the way down to 25% of the original speed. And you can even make it like last all the way till that bar. And then it clicks right back to 100% right on the downbeat of the next measure. Let's give that a try. Right. Okay, so now the only problem is, is when we go to generate or record a new track, which I think we're going to be doing a new one. Uh, yes, record on a new track. So when I push record, it'll make a new track down here and I'm going to record a little something from the beginning. Hello, hello, hello. You notice that I just held that note through there. However, when we go back and listen to it, it affects the track if you do it all within the same project. Hello, hello, hello. Sounds pretty amazing. Ooh. 
so to get rid of that, what we would do is once we have this track all set, then we export as, I don't know, MP3 for now, I suppose is fine. Um, what in the world? I don't even know. I have so many files going on. Working file. Where's my working file? Desktop working file. There it is. This is my demo. Of course, you could do wave so that you don't lose as much um, when it converts. Convert it. Shut this thing down. No, I don't think I need to save that. Um, but I can open that new file that I just saved in my working folder. Demo track. Now it's going to open it up in Audacity. It mean it kept the stretch of the tempo in those measures. However, when we record that new track, it does not affect the pitch now because it's just a track. It's not messing with the timeline anymore. Hello. And that was me recording it. And when I play back, we have the same thing. Hello. forth and make many rhythm tracks and we'll talk to you later bye